my background art isn't impressive because of the technology. It looks impressive because we've been trained not to pay attention to the world around us. Let's talk about that while I work on this week's practice sketch. Hello and welcome back beautiful blooms. I'm Galatunia and I ramble about various topics while learning how to draw. Answer me this. How many times have you seen someone call out an AI post only to get a bunch of people commenting, wait, how can you tell? I'm so confused because it looks so real. How can you be sure? This is why there was a trend for a while where people would essentially correct AI images that appeared in their feeds and would point out things like screwed up hands or how hair would melt into clothes. But until recently, this attention was really only given to character art, and I think that's for a few reasons. The first being character art is just more popular, right? So it gets more attention, it gets more people trying to use AI to mimic it, you get the idea. Another reason, at least my personal theory on this, is it's easier to spot the mistakes. We all know what our hands and our faces are supposed to look like because they're literally our bodies. We have no choice but to interact with and through our bodies every day. But in order to spot AI background images, you have to have a general idea of what that scenery is supposed to look like. And to know what those things look like, you have to actually pay attention to the world around you, which most of us aren't good at doing. The whole reason this video exists is because I was fooled by this AI kitchen I really liked on Pinterest, which in hindsight I feel pretty dumb about it because the signs are really obvious now. But like most people who spew the phrase, I can't tell the difference. I was scrolling Pinterest late at night, saw a cute kitchen in colors I loved, and then I saved to look at it later. And it was only after I did that and studied the picture more closely that the details finally became clear to me and I realized what I had saved. I was so mad that it inspired me to go look up proper references to draw a kitchen scene. Which if anyone watching this is also trying to learn how to draw scenery art and you're having a hard time getting references for like interiors, retailers. Most home decor retailers still have to use actual photos of their products, at least for now. So I'm probably going to be using that more often for my own drawings if I decide I want to try and study something a little more realistic. Anyway, social media is designed specifically for this kind of fast and passive viewing experience. And AI art, especially background art, thrives because of it. Think about it, right? Most platforms need you to not linger on a post for too long. They need you to keep scrolling. The more you scroll, the more ads you're served, and thus the more money the platform makes. And they're all pushing this experience especially hard right now because venture capital money is drying up and they all have bills to pay. Side note, this is why you see every platform, including YouTube, trying to be an everything platform you know, where you can post text, videos, still images, and can even shop from various stores inside their respective apps. That's why most of that venture capital money is gone and they need to figure out how to get more money out of us. This is also the same reason why streaming services now have ad-free tiers and paid ad tiers, but I digress. This carefully crafted end user experience is magnified by the lifestyles we're forced to live. And this is more the meat of what I wanted to get into when doing this video. Because most news articles these days, they try to claim American adults have like an average of five hours of free time on a weekday. Because when you actually listen to people talking online, it's a lot closer to two hours a day when you factor in commuting, family, chores. And then of course, your managers with no sense of boundaries and trying to get you to work hours you didn't sign up for. Because most jobs aren't paying a living wage, and so you're pressured to take those hours to pay rent. So when we do finally have that downtime and we decide to spend it in an app, most people are kind of rushing, right? You start scrolling almost mindlessly, subconsciously looking for that dopamine hit and trying to get as many of those as you possibly can before you have to go to bed and we repeat the process all over again. And when we do that, we're not paying attention to the details of the things we see. And trust me, you know those nonsensical mistakes AI makes with character art? They do the same things with background art too. Like, 
a pitcher, not having a handle you can hold so you can actually use it for its intended purpose, to pour liquid, or plants fusing into shelves or having multiple baskets or pots fused together because it doesn't understand that these things are layered in a home. Because despite what anyone wants to say, generative AI has no real understanding of background, middle ground, and foreground. Textures are a big thing too, like I sincerely don't even know what these puffballs are supposed to be. It's clearly trying to imitate a poof chair, but what are the things around it? <laughs> this mirror is literally broken and non-existent. And is this supposed to be a handle? A handle to what? What drawer? There is none. It's just a wall. You get the idea. But this extends beyond social media training us to not care about details. As I said earlier, even if you're scrolling, you can still pick out AI character art relatively quickly because the mistakes in them aren't mistakes a human would actually make. We inherently know this because of our relationship to our bodies. Yet when it comes to background art and interior design photos, I've noticed most people just flat out don't understand how the world around us is supposed to look like or function. There's also the overwhelming sense that background art isn't as important. As the name implies, it's the background. Especially in the VTuber space because people aren't paying attention to what they're buying and that's kind of disheartening. But we've been trained to live these fast-paced lifestyles where the world just fades away and we don't actually look at it or question it. We put on headphones so we don't have to talk to people on our morning commute. And trust me, often that's out of self-defense, been there. We're stuck in cubicles or behind cash registers listening to people scream as they take advantage of customer service workers. In other words, we're all kind of checked out and it's easy to understand why. <laughs> But because we're checked out, I think that's why the solar eclipse was such a phenomenon earlier this week. Like, yeah, the timing and how long it'll be until the next one was a big part of all that. But the hype over that forced a lot of people to stop the grind for just one day and watch the world around us. I remember a lot of interviews that day had a lot of people talking about the emotional impact the eclipse had on them. and. Yeah, our environment does have an impact on how we feel and function. It's why I made a video about why the architecture industry needs to change, because being surrounded by the minimalist gray cubes they love are depressing and everyone suffers from them. Just to give another example, I remember when I first got my glasses. I was in college and I assumed the difference wouldn't be that great because my eyesight wasn't that bad, but it was enough that I was still squinting at like the whiteboard from the back of the room. Yet after I got them, I took one look up into a tree canopy and I was astounded by all of the details I had been missing out on. It was no longer just a green blob. There were different shades of green that changed how the leaves filtered in the sunlight. Each leaf had a unique shape, but they were still similar enough to kind of give it this uniformity. And it was just overall far more beautiful than I remember a tree actually being. My point is, and why I bring that up in the first place, is AI art, especially background art, would not be nearly as widespread if we were allowed to slow down and live in a way that appreciates the world around us. Because if we did, it would be a lot easier to call out AI art for the soulless imitation that it is, because we'd inherently know what those images should look like, just like we mostly do with our bodies. But when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. This is my first original piece, and my anger towards AI brought it about. I admit that makes me feel complicated too, and it's not something I want to make a habit of doing, but I'm glad I drew it in this instance, and in this particular moment, it made me stop and think, which is always a good thing. That being said, like always, I'd like to know what you think. Have you noticed a pattern in what sorts of AI images you have trouble identifying as such? Because there's more to it than character art versus background art, and I know for a fact I didn't get to delve into everything in this video, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. What kinds of AI images give you trouble, and do you know why? And as always, thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in that architecture vid I made, I'll leave it up on the screen here. And if you're new here and you'd like to see more of my art practice vlogs, I'll have a playlist up for YouTube, so you can binge on that when you're ready.
So until next time, see you then.